recording now, yes. Okay. Okay. So I was saying you're in the chair. If there's anything you want to say by introduction, and otherwise when you're done, I can just sort of update where where we are as at this moment. Yeah, I think you you take it a take it away. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, to recap and bear in mind the the process of doing the interviews, screening the proposals, uh, the whole RFP process, and I'm doing it kind of in reverse order. Um, some of us, some of us were involved with a whole lot of it. Uh, Bill was involved in none of it, and uh, rest of the audit committee members were involved in part of it, not the RFP process, but the, certainly the interviews and the discussions that took part, place after those interviews. So, if we just hit the um, independent audit first, the audit of the town's financial statements, a CFR. Uh, where we came out and um, uh, all of the four mem then members of the audit committee and Diana were all part of that discussion. Uh, we we decided um, to reappoint uh, PKF um, to what? To recommend. The town council has to go through the contractual process, uh, but to recommend the reappointment of PKF O'Connor Davies as our auditors, and in terms of things to do, and Anne, I guess I'm addressing this at you, and uh, we now have Mike on board with us. Thank, welcome, Mike. Um, and we were going to do two things, I guess, let the um, CLA who are not selected know that they were not selected, and we were going to at least informally um, advise uh, PKF that our intention is to, to go with them so they can start preparing to do the 24 audit. Um, do you know if either or both of those things have happened? So we informally told um, CLA, I'm sorry, PKF, and it went in uh, the, uh, we got their engagement letter so we can get in front of the town council as well for next week. So we can, not next week, the next meeting um, to move forward. And what we actually would need to let CLA know what would the committee like us to typically they like to know why um what was the difference or some sort of overview of why they weren't the chosen one and we'll have that with the internals as well that they'll we're actually some of the internals are reaching out already to get status we've been kind of saying we haven't made the decision yet but I'd like the committee to tell me or advise me of how you'd like me to tell CLA okay um I mean it just I think it's fair to say, and everyone can chime in here. Um, I mean, they were more expensive, but I don't think we didn't ever get into cost. It wasn't a big difference. It was more questions that we have a new first selectman. We have four out of five new audit committee members that this isn't the, the time to sort of change change audit. Okay. I mean, Diana, everyone, is that a fair, fair assessment? or And should we communicate it that way? Yeah, I, I think, think that Mary. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dave. No, you go ahead, Mary. Mary no, go I ahead. was going to say I would. I would agree. I also think part of our thoughts when we were talking as well is that we thought uh, CLA wasn't maybe not going to be um, in person as often as um, PKF, and um, given as as Robin mentioned, all the new people and and the changes and everything else. I think that's part of it um, as well, um, you know, looking at my notes. Um, so that's really, you know, it, you know, where, where, you know, between that and um, the familiarity is a big deal, you know? Yeah. Um... I, I think, there, I th I think in addition to that, I, I agree with the continuity. I think that's really important uh the continuity of having the same uh audit firm with our with our current group and our new group and um lastly we you know they can't be external auditors if they're going to help us with the internal uh, as far as the firm. Uh, you know i i wonder if we need to go beyond the fact the point that i i mentioned if we start getting into 
on site versus not on site compared you know there you know there might be going down a rabbit hole there i don't know what do you think i i but i think it's a fair observation from my perspective only because if CLA was really going to be starting from fresh, and I saw comparing the two um, proposals, thank you, and for sending that to me. Um, you know, the hours under CLA were going to have to be a lot higher because they had a lot much steeper learning curve. Um, and that would speak to me that it would actually be more important to be on site. But if if it appears that CLA is going to do this much more virtually, as opposed to um, sort of the incumbent, I, I think I think that's important. So I, I think it's an important um, point to make. Now, uh, Rob, I wouldn't be worried about them coming back and say, "Oh, don't worry, we'll we'll have them all on site." You know, I mean, it, it is part of our thinking. It's just one element of it, but I, I think it's a meaningful point to say, and I don't think it sends you down a rabbit hole. But that that's just my two cents. I know. I mean, it was yeah. Okay. All right. It was an important question for I mean, Janet, how she asked you know, it of every every firm. I, I'm totally unfamiliar with this process because in the private sector, you don't do this. You just tell people that they were not selected and that's the end of it. So having to go back and give people reasons is a totally new territory for me. So, um, did, did, and you have enough the, uh, to go on? Anne? Sorry? Do you have enough to go on now? Oh, yeah, no, I have plenty. I have plenty. Yep. Plenty, plenty. Okay, can we move yep. on then? Okay. Uh, quick, quick question, Rob. Question, Rob. Does the um, the committee need to make a vote on this? Um, a vote we, on the recommendation? No. Well, I suppose we could. We've, you know, we we were we had a consensus. Um, I, I think I, we should. I think, I think we should. should. Yeah, all right. we should put all it in favor formally. of appointing PK. Okay. But, but 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 but. All right. The reason why I asked that, I just wanted to. I just had two, and 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 these are, and I'm having been through the materials, I admittedly, I didn't get the benefit of the interviews, but my, my read is this is the, the, the best decision that um, the committee is going to go with. But I did have two, two or three quick questions I just wanted to get, and it's not going to, um, it's not going to lead to any, any other kind of different conclusion. But I think what's really key in my mind in the, the audit is a lot of the, the planning and the risk assessment. And I know that for um, the PKF, I think they said they would have that, I think, all or done all or around August 15th. And, and in their pitch, they talked about confirm, you know, the understanding. I just wanted to go on record saying I, I want to make sure the audit committee, before it's finalized, and, and Anne and Deanna, they probably will first spend a ton of time with you all. I think the audit committee should definitely see the the plan scope for the final scope before they kick it off because I think do. that's yeah. something mm. I think that's something that we we the audit just as a matter of good financial mm. hygiene I think the audit committee should see that um, before it's finalized and then second of all maybe this is more of a town council or Deanna point um, we know for the fee that came in the hundred and eight and change. Um, are they actually capping capping it? What or is it? If for some reason they got to go over more hours, are we on the hook for that as a town, or do they do they actually put a cap in? And have we actually seen? I don't think there's a cap. Is there, Anne? I, I mean, if there, we make them no do cap. extra work, they're gonna they're gonna pay. We're gonna charge. They're gonna charge us, right? Okay. And typically, and they we... they bill. They, sorry, bill. They they bill. They invoice based on their hours, but they come up with their number based on a typical audit. Because with a lot of municipalities, the audit firms end up doing a lot of the closing entries. So that's when those add-ons happen. So uh, they'll give you the scope right now of this is what, like, it's it's pretty much split half and half between us and the Board of Ed from their engagement letter. Um, but based on what when they come in and what they see that has or has not been done, audit firms typically do a lot of the entries. They don't in our town. They, we, we eliminated that. But um, that's where the extra cost comes in. Um, we've eliminated okay. pretty much yet. Yeah. And, and okay. that's, it, that's uh, strictly not audit work. It's, a, it's accounting services. So it's, okay. yeah, it should, yeah, it's accounting, okay. closing the books for the year. Yeah. yeah. No. But it's hard yeah. to audit and, if you can't close the books. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, I mean, certainly in the four years, your first point, uh, Bill, 
that I've been on the committee, the audit committee has received and gone through and had a chance to comment on the audit plan before it's carried out. Yeah. So, so, so I guess at some point, I, I don't know, Anne and Deanna, when, or Anne, I, particularly when they're going to start, you know, feeding you stuff, but I, I just don't know. I'm curious if you have a sense when it will be, I mean, is it, is it really like August 15th is when you think we'll see something close to final for the plan or will we see something before then? Well, what we typically, we have a prelim in usually June. We have a prelim meeting where we give them a lot of reports. We get, uh, and Diana, I can't think of the name right now, what they call them. It's literally their timeline of everything, of what they're going to ask for, timelines yep. of when they expect it. So they do the prelim in, in, like I said, in June. We go through a lot of things, and then they come back for September to say they want everything at that point because of the board of ed is closed at the end of August. Mm -hmm. um, and then in September is when they start really asking for all the major documents because we should be technically closed by then. Okay. So when, in your, from your perspective, do you think would be an appropriate time for the audit committee to, to see something? Well, we can, um, depending, not understanding fully what exactly you want to see, but when they send us their kickoff form, should I say, their, their listing, we can send that out directly. But is there specific things that we send them or I just want an understanding of what it is that you're looking yeah. to see. I, I, I think I, I think that it would just make sense for the committee to to see it before it becomes final final. So um uh, you know whether that's the end of June. I, I don't know. I'm not sure how sort of the pacing and rhythm goes. Um I, I certainly obviously you know it's important for town management to kind of in my mind put their first imprint on it and say, oh yeah, this is you know, so I, I don't know, something I guess that that you know you and Dion and everybody else is sort of comfortable with that you think is in pretty good shape. I, that's that's my own perspective. Others on the committee may have a different feel. Um sorry, I mean in the interest of time and we got half an hour for this, or at least I do. I wonder if we can move we can, we can pick this up, Bill, but so that we do actually get through the internal audit side. So if, you, can we can we move to that? We can come, we can come back to to this. On Is, was the internal audit on the agenda? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Independent yes. accounting. Um, I guess. What does it got say? It. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, everyone, to sum to summarize, we got four six proposals. Um, only two of them were from firms that would service the engagements out of the tri-state area. The others were from states that are. Or cities that are further away, Maryland and was probably the next nearest beyond. So, and uh, either you or Diana, I can't remember what it was, wrote and we rejected them on the base. We didn't interview them, right? Four of them. And I, either you or Diana, I can't remember who said, well, what we want to write back to them and tell them that, that, that we're not moving forward with them. What reason do we give? And, and I wrote back and gave something along those lines. Do you know if those four firms? were informed that uh, we were not going to move forward. Okay. Diane, can you confirm if we did or did not? I know we were formulating the emails. I don't remember if we sent them out at this point because we weren't sure. Hmm. Right. I'll, I have to, Robin, I have to get back to you on that. We'll, that well, you, you, uh, you don't oh, wait, need Diane to. just said something. Diane just yes. said something. We can't hear you, Diane. Um, I said I did not send something out directly because I felt like we were in flux a little. But I certainly yes, do that. Thank you. Today. All right. I think. I mean, certainly, I authorize you to do that. So the sooner, the sooner, the sooner, rather than later. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So you no, don't we'll need. To, I we don't need to. I don't need to wish to see a draft of it or anything like that. Just just inform them that they're not moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so to to move on. Um, uh, yeah, we interviewed the, did you, the Robin, two. did you want to go back and just do an official vote now on the um, external auditor? Thank you for yeah. a reminder, Mrs. Chairman. Okay. <laughs> can any um, any further comments or can we put it to a vote? Not for okay, me. so uh, vote to propose uh, to the town council to enter into a contract with PKF O'Connor Davies um, on the basis of their proposal to audit the turn towns financial statements all in favor oh, oh. Well, second, sorry, second it but yeah, I said, yeah. Yeah. sorry second. sorry second it yeah okay sorry okay I've made the motion okay all right so proposed and seconded by bill yeah 
And it was um, unanimous. Did I say right. it was unanimous? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. So yes. um, to move on. So we interviewed the other two firms just to recap on um, on the same day. That was CLA, uh, different people, of course, from the external audit side and Cohen Resnick. Um, and after you know deliberation discussion, um, followed by some one on one discussions between me and pretty much all of you. Um, either by email or in some cases phone calls or both, and including Janet, who's not here, um, and having also consulted with the um, outgoing members of the audit committee as to how this worked in the past, because since I've been on the audit committee, we've had no internal auditing. Um, and uh, what I learned from them, and they had learned from other towns in the area, is not uh, that we have not typically, historically, from the years when we've had into locked ourselves into working with, with one firm. We've worked with two, actually three in, in UK and in the years leading up to the pandemic. Um, the two offerings were, and uh, you know, Bill, you were not part of the interviews, but you've seen they, 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 bring, they bring different things, uh, the two uh, proposals. Um, they're, they're quite different in some respects. So I, I think where we ended up, and we will take a vote on this, is to ask both firms for a master service agreement, um, which uh, Cohn Resnick included with their proposal. CLA did not. So I asked Diane, I think you're in the room there, to, to get one from them. We've got it. It's similar, of course. We now have that. Would be to ask our... And Diana, you'll have to help me if this is the process. Ask our legal counsel just going to comb through them and see if there's anything in them that they don't like. And maybe there's some sort of discussion as with other service providers about, you know, can we change this? Can we improve that? Can we tweak that? Um, and then put it to the town. What we would like to do, and we're going to vote on, is put it to the town's council that we enter into a master service agreement to provide internal audit services upon our request with both of these firms or either, you know, at, at, at our choice. And we would enter into a uh, SLA, I think they call it, each time we go out, out with a project. And it doesn't ensure either firm that they will ever get projects from us, we, but we'll have, we'll, we'll have the choice uh, of, of two firms with having established a master service agreement that, you know, we can say, we would like you to audit these aspects of our transfer station operations um, and ask them to propose on that in terms of time and fees and so on. So, um, anyone else to comment? Because we've, you know, we've had this had this discussion or views um, uh, as to how I've set, how, how I've set that out as a as a way to move forward. I actually think it's good. Sorry, um, because yeah. I they both bring such different items to the table. And depending on where and what we want to focus on would certainly then dictate who we um, would ask to do that service. So I think it's an excellent solution um, to get the best for the particular project. Mm. One other thing I might throw in, having talked to you know outgoing members of the committee, is um, you know, they want something done that, you know, uh, the previous chairman didn't like to wait a long time for things to get done, as some of you know. Uh, they would contact, you know, firm A, and they say, "Well, yeah, we'd love to do it for you, but we can't get to it for three months or something, right?" And then you go to firm B and say, well, "What can you do, and what time frame you can do it?" So I think your point, Mary, is, is a more important one. But there's also a question of availability of staff because, uh, you know, the, with internal, uh, with, a, with a financial statement audit, as we all know, I, I mean, you know what you're going to do when. There's a timetable that goes from sort of June to December and you know what you're going to do when and you plan it. Whereas internal audit projects, I mean, these people have, you know, many clients and they don't know what we're going to ask them to do, when we're going to ask them to do it, you know, and how long are we expecting them to take and you know, it's, 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 it's more, it's, it's, un, you know, I've worked in that space. It's, it's unpredictable work. So any further comments? Um, uh, you've, uh, so Bill, you've looked at the proposals. Um, 
the two, I don't know whether you looked at the other four, but um, uh, any thoughts? Well, I, I, I kind of um, second the comment that Mary made. I think it's a great idea just having sort of a master services agreement to let you sort of cherry pick and 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 it gives you some flexibility i think having it'll probably keep them each firm on their toes knowing mm -hmm. that there's somebody else and you're not just going with one particular entity the one sort of administrative question i had is right so the the whatever the proposed master services agreement it the the fee we're not deciding fees or costs now even for theoretical projects that may or may not uh, reach fruition right so in terms of does this mean every time a new project gets blessed and says let's go do this that's when it has to go through I guess Diana the selectman and or the town council or are they signing up are we signing off on a dollar figure now I think at the time that you sign the agreement, because you don't know what you're going to be asking them to do, I think that at the time that we sign the agreement, then it'll have to come through. Mm -hmm. And okay, I mean, but, but I mean, but, you, okay. you're going to have a scope of work. Everybody's going to have different scopes of work, and yeah. so there would be a different. I mean, the the, the um, I don't know if you know this, Bill. I mean, the selectmen meet every two weeks so they're not long yep. days if it doesn't have to go through town council for something yeah. like this okay. and they both put you know uh, hourly rates in their proposals i mean you know i i, I mean i would certainly my experience you you know you could you can either just accept those or you you can you can sure. try negotiate them right and say you know would you do it for you know, the principal instead of four twenty five, would you three seventy five? I don't know. You know, I yep. don't got it. Yeah. Okay. I, no, make make makes total sense. I just wanted to confirm yeah. that that's how I thought it was going to be done. I just wanted uh, to. So, sure. quick question for Anne. Then, so we and Diane, right? So you now have both master service agreements. I guess. Tell me if I'm wrong. We have to get the lawyers to to sort of read them, do them yeah. once over, see if they, yep. approve, and then they have to get to town council. Uh, to approve as master service. So, what's is that doable in, in, a, in a time frame for the next council meeting? Well, the next town council, no, probably not because the town council meets this week. I mean, I can check, but um, I don't, do we have, we don't have the agreement yet. So, no, we, we have, so we have, we'll, we'll have spaces. It the, we do, we have, but we'll get it to council, which will give us the, because we can't start any sooner than July 1st. Mm. So, we can get it for the June meeting. As Deanna said, it's too early for next week, but we can get it for the June meeting. Um, mm. And we'll obviously send it out to the to the committee for your review once uh, legal has mm. said it, so you're aware of what's going in front of sure. um, town council. Well, so we have them, um, but they, you know, they, they, they're just off the shelf with all the blank spaces, right? With all their terms and conditions, the typical sort of thing as to what their responsibilities and ours are. So. All right, so and you can move that, um, start moving that through. I guess the next step is for the lawyers to look at it. Yes. So, Mike, I don't know if you want to chime in here on any of this, but it looks like for the um, audit, the independent audit of our financial statements, it'll go to council, hopefully, and correct next next week. Needs no, to. Uh, the, the external next week, we'll get the yes. uh, engagement letter. Right. And then engagement in letter. June will be the, yeah. And then the following meeting will be the, the two master service agreements we want to enter into with two different service providers who can, when we need it, provide internal audit services. So, oh, is that okay? Correct. Yep. All right. Did Did you vote? Did you vote to pick Not those yet. two? No, no, no. Just oh, okay. To, you know, okay. Mike, I'm trying to keep on. So, no. We're gonna. So, so I understand. We're gonna have, <clears throat> and we're I'm, we're fine for next week for uh, uh, moving forward on the external, on the internal. It's just on understanding this. It's going to be two firms engaged for internal auditing with different scopes. Or am I wrong about that? Different, depending on what they want to do, they'll choose the auditor based on on the type of work they want done and their availability. Mm -hmm. Okay, but am I? That, that, that would be management together with the audit committee collaboratively yeah you know so and, uh, and and how do we determine who's going to be handling what just is it into a broad view 
This is just the audit committee purview then, Mike. The town council wouldn't have purview over, you know, the audit committee selects the scope of the audit, the internal audit that they want done. That is their role. And so once the town council approves these two uh, firms as potential internal auditors, and we after we get the, you know, agreements with from the lawyers, then the audit committee would determine the scope of work and who they wanted to engage. But you're approving who they are and they have the ability to engage with based on, you know, the, the yeah. meeting that you have. Um, Mike, so you, you were on the Zoom when we had those interviews um, and you've obviously got the proposals. They're two very different propositions in a sense that the one um, Connecticut based had the, the people who would do the work work very extensively with municipalities in New England, including many in Connecticut. That is what they do 90% of the time, internal audit work for municipalities, you know, in this part of the world. The other firm has a much larger and deeper um, risk slash internal audit practice, uh, experiences across industries and the private sector and hospitals and all kinds of things. Um, and brings a, you know a different a different skill set that depending on the project you might prefer one one or the other. You might want something, you know. Let me say if, if you're auditing, I'll go back to my transfer station. Uh, you uh, you're probably better off with a firm that's audited ten transfer stations in the last two years as opposed to a firm that's never done one. Right? Um, if you're auditing a building project. You know, it probably doesn't matter the extent of your municipal uh, work experience. It's more important to have experience of auditing building projects, even if it is for a hospital. So those are just a couple of thoughts uh, that ended into our thinking. And I would have to say I was uh, impressed with the systems auditing ability of. Um, oh, my gosh, I'm having a mind blip. Um, but anyway, yeah. yeah. So I, but I think, you know, they like you said, Robin, they each have different competencies. I mean, they probably have some overlapping competencies, mm. um, but but uh, each firm has some some things yeah. that they're specifically. Uh, you know, give. and this is not to say we're going to go one for you, one for you. I mean, in the course of a year, we might give one firm five projects and another firm none. I mean, we, we this is, gives us this flexibility as Mary articulated. So any other comments or shall we uh, put it to a vote? So I don't want to we put it to a vote. Sure. All right. Anyone I want to propose that we go down this route of entering into master service agreements with CLA and Cone Resnick? Any proposal? I'll make that motion. Okay. Seconder. Right. Okay. From Tony. Okay. All in favor? Right. Aye. Mike, are you in favor? Oh, sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's in favor of oh, a uh, meeting, I think. So, oh, okay. <laughs> so <am> I. <laughs> Look, um, thank you all. I think we know where we're going with these with these two work streams. Uh, thank you for your time. Are there any closing remarks from anyone? Um, I just want to remind everybody, I think June 7th, right, Robin, is our next meeting at 8.30. Let me look pull up my calendar here. June. And... I, I'm um, I love to um, have items to put on the agenda. Right. Um, what you can do, Mary, obviously, is go and look at the, the June meeting last year as a start, and you and I should huddle on that sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, the meeting was, in fact, on June the 7th, 2023. And mm -hmm. primary discussion, I'm looking at my notes here, besides the minutes was, guess what? The 2023 audit plan. Um, timing, mm -hmm. staffing, new standards, engagement letter, blah, blah, blah. Just as we discussed earlier, that was the primary topic. We need to ensure that PKF will be ready for us then. We also had on the agenda, the process and timing for issuing the RFPs. Why won't we doing that again? And then we went through the monthly reports from the BOE and the town and uh, a few things like bonding plans and so on. So take a look at the agenda, see what you think, Mary, and then you and I can, uh, you know, in the next week, maybe next week, we can. Sure. Put out and then anybody else. Can might I have throw it? 
Oh, sorry, Mary. That's what I was going to. Can I throw a suggestion in with it being sure. the first kickoff meeting, and then we'll have you'll see the prelim um, listing of stuff somewhere in because we you don't typically have meetings in the summer. Um, to have PKF come in and go through the APR, mm -hmm. all the different pieces between our budgetary modified accrual, full accrual, because the schedules you look on page twenty five and the numbers are different on this. So a lot of questions always come up of why is this number different than this number, and it might be just for all of us to go through a whole, have PKF and go through our, our AFR sections maybe. And it can explain, they can explain too why GFOA, why it's formatted because of our GFOA rules and things like that in why we do the CAFR in that format maybe. I think that sounds great. Fine, could you, I mean, could you, the two puddle on that maybe, and you can just give more specifics to uh, Mary on that. And by the way, okay. for everyone who's new here, I mean, Mary and I don't just work out the agenda and put it up on the website. Every all the members of the committee get to review a, a draft and to provide suggestions for additional topics. I'm just reading, looking at my notes here from last and, year. Or or Robin, how um just so we make sure that, you know, because you tend to want to have the board of ed members there and things like that, the, you know, either the superintendent or Sean. Um sure. just Will when you send, you know, it, just to notice them early so that they know if you want them in attendance and who, you know, just so everybody's well aware of if if they're needed at that meeting or not. Yeah, I guess Chuck will care. I mean, they I don't know whether they I mean, they always come um, whether they look at the calendar on a town. Hall. I think it would be helpful just to like if you're sending the agenda, make sure that. Whoever you yeah. want there is copied on that agenda. Yep. Yes. No, absolutely. Mary's. No, no yep. I mean, Diana, uh, Anne, Diane, yep. Sean, the superintendent should all be copied on the draft agenda yep. when it's ready. And um, um, the, yeah, then there's, a, then there's a gap through the summer. We don't meet again until the fall and, you know, sometimes these dates change, but it I, we've got dates on the calendar right through the end of the year. So, okay. I move we adjourn. Just, can we have a vote to adjourn? Get some lunch? Okay. All <laughs> in favor? I'll second. Second? Yeah. All right. <laughs>